Hi guys, welcome to Cryptids Canada. I hope everybody's having a great day. And if you're not, well, I hope it improves after listening in on this video. I'm sorry that it's been more than a few days since I put a video up. I had to go back down to the city. My daughter-in-law needed surgery, so I was there to watch the kids. I had a great time. We stayed in a nice hotel, and uh, yeah, it was just a lot of fun. Anyways, I'm back at home, so back to work. Okay, so let's get this show on the road. So this story is titled, Is There Something Odd About Bigfoot? Okay, well, let's find out. Hi, Leslie. I wrote to you when you first started your show. It cannot be said that I am not a procrastinator, LOL. But seriously, I do lead a very busy lifestyle, so stuff does get put on the back burner sometimes. And of course, I get nervous that my story might not be believed until I had the experience I had the other night. It's probably best to start from the beginning. I come from a long family history of servicemen. Many made the military their lifelong careers. But those of us who did our tours and decided it wasn't for us usually chose careers in law enforcement. And that's what I did. One of the reasons for this was during boot camp, we went on one of many all-day hikes into the mountains in which the sun beat down on us in the first part of the day and then it started to pour. I felt like I was almost delusional because I kept seeing man-like beings appearing before my eyes, and then they would fade away, all within about five seconds, it seemed. I had this happen about six or seven times. Also, it didn't appear to be the same being, because they all looked to be different. At the end of the day's hike, we made camp, which consisted of dropping our packs and sitting right there where we stood, opening an MRE and eating under our ponchos while it poured all around us. It was a grueling day for sure, but on top of that, I was really worried about what I had seen periodically through that day. I whispered to my battle buddy about my experience, but he was already asleep before I could explain it to him. At some point during that awful wet night, the slow, easy rain turned into an all-out thunderstorm, complete with wind, rain, thunder, and lightning. And of course, I woke up, I had to take a leak. Now, if I would have thought about those creatures I had seen throughout the day, I wouldn't have moved. But I only thought of one thing, and that was I had to pee. So as I stood away from the group, trying to hurry, there was a flash of lightning, and I could see about eight feet, just inside the wood line, another one of those creatures. But this one had to have been standing about ten feet tall, and it stunk to high heavens. I started backing away, trying to keep my eye on it. But after the lightning strike, it seemed to just disappear. I turned to run and I tripped over my own feet. And I made it back to my spot. I noticed my sergeant was staring at me and shaking his head. I knew that I would never be able to mention what I saw. It was that day and night that decided my future. I chose law enforcement for my career, which is always the one or the other in our family. Life fell into place for me, and pretty soon I forgot the experience of boot camp. Until one night, I was sent to a call about a man finding his goats dead or gone. The man was pissed, and he was ranting and raving about these stinking apes stealing his livestock, and he can't afford to keep replacing these animals when the apes just help themselves. When I realized that he was referring to the same things that I may have seen that one day and night at boot camp, 
I about lost it. Now they had a name, Bigfoot or Sasquatch. I took the report and I went on a break. I asked a buddy slash colleague what he thought of the call and he was quite surprised that I had never heard of them. He was completely at ease with them and had known of them his whole life. So after that, I was not as fearful because now they were no longer unknown to me. But I still had a strong unease with them as I learned more and more. This was how it was explained to me by my buddy, who was raised in the area where they were more common. He said many people believe they are filthy, dirty humans that were left behind when evolution took place. If you look at the Neanderthal man and cover its body in coarse hair, that's a Bigfoot. But as the world is becoming more and more aware of them, because of TV shows and social media, more and more stories of special abilities are being shared, i.e. cloaking and mind speak. I was left wondering if I saw what I thought I saw. The images were fleeting and the last one was during a flash of lightning. I had to stop obsessing, that was for sure. And I couldn't be judgmental when others had experienced them either. Then, about six months after I got the call about the missing goats, I got called out to the farm again. I was met in the driveway by the wife. She said her husband had caught one stealing the chickens, and it ran into the barn when he shot at it. Apparently it was trapped in the barn. Okay, I thought. Now we'll see. We went around to the back, and there was a fair amount of commotion carrying on. I screamed at the man to put his gun down so I could assess the situation, and all of a sudden, the back door around the side exploded out, and I saw a large, hair-covered, mannish-looking creature take off on all fours. It made it across the acre field in seconds. It was the fastest I had ever seen a being move, especially something with two legs and two arms. When I look back, I recall that its arms were extremely long, much longer than a human's. It was like it was meant to travel on its hands and feet, almost like he isn't quite as far along the evolutionary chart as we are. Or maybe it's us who isn't as far along the evolutionary chart as they are. I mean, hey, wouldn't it be great to be able to disappear and speak to someone without your voice? But regardless, I still had a weird doubt. Maybe I just couldn't believe that they were real. So now it was sort of well known with the guys I work with and dispatch that I'm really into Bigfoot and figuring out the truth. Basically. So... When strange or unknown calls came in, and usually I would be the one that would jump to answer them. So, last night, I heard that a call came in from a young girl who was at home alone. She lived in a small trailer with her mom at the back of their grandmother's property. All the adults were gone for the evening and she was alone. She said she was watching TV when she started hearing noises. Then something started to hit the trailer. Then she saw a giant man looking in the living room window. The trailer is up on blocks, so that window is fairly high up. So she snuck to the door and peeked out. She said she saw it was a Bigfoot bending down and looking in the window. And as she called, she said she was hiding under the bed. So I went there right away and didn't see anything, but I went inside because the dispatcher said she was afraid to come out from under the bed. I was only inside less than 45 seconds when I felt the trailer start to rock back and forth. I went outside with my gun drawn and I began to walk around the trailer when I came face to face with the belly button. It was the biggest creature 
I could ever fathom. I was paralyzed. Then I heard a soft grunt, and I began to look up. When I did, I saw it was looking down at me, and then it just turned and walked away. All I can remember is its thin lips stretched across its face, almost from ear to ear. It had a very large bulbous nose. Its nipples were at least 20 inches apart. Why I remember that, of all things? Because I actually thought to myself that his chest was solid muscle and his chest was wider by more than double of my shoulder width. I could see the six-pack in his stomach, and he had a body odor, but it wasn't as bad as you hear. I believe he was probably a leader of his community, because he, had, he could have easily killed me, but he didn't, and that showed good judgment. I have to say that maybe, to you, I have had more than enough evidence to believe that they existed especially during boot camp. But now I have no doubt whatsoever. There is literally nothing else that they could be. Take from this what you will. Signed, Will the Cop. And yes, you may use my name. Well, I'm impressed, Will. Um, I can totally understand... Um. The doubt. I can totally understand not being able to wrap your brain around things. Um, This is a really odd world we live in in this day and age. But um, there's so much evidence that these creatures do exist. And there's still so many people that think it's nothing but hooey. But you know what I think is kind of funny? You've got a community of people that believe in Bigfoot. They believe that Bigfoot can cloak. They believe that Bigfoot can mind speak. But they continuously call each other hoaxers. (laughs) I don't get it myself. I think that we should be more supportive to one another. But I just love that these stories are coming in from, from people that don't belong to this community. And the community is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. The proof is out there. We just have to tell the stories. Anyways, guys, you know I love ya. Please hit the thumbs up, hit the bell for notifications, and subscribe. And if you feel like it and you think somebody will like this, share it. It just helps out the channel. Okay, guys, have a great day and we'll see you back here in a couple of days. Bye for now.